Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and welcome to a brand new episode of T3M or the topic of this month and the topic of this month is security and compliance and today we have with us Ian UFL Chief Customer Officer at Slim.ai. Ian, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Before we talk about this topic, you I mean, your own background is in this, so I would love to talk just a bit about yourself. Talk a bit about yourself and what led you to join Slim.ai. I've been in the cybersecurity field for over 15 years. Prior to that, uh, I was in worked in military intelligence. Um, so this is an area that I'm I'm very passionate about, uh, and uh, I've worked at big and small companies. Uh, the uh, a number of different startups to include. Uh, I worked at CloudLock. Uh, and which has, after the acquisition worked with uh, John and Kyle actually at Cisco additionally. And when I heard about this new project that they were working on and and uh, the potential impact it could have and the, the number of users that they were already working with around the open source project, I was really excited to, uh, to work with them and uh, help figure out how to take this Let's just talk about how you have seen uh, evolution of uh, security when we talk about, of course, I'm not going to get into the traditional IT work, though still we have data centers, we still have mainframe, but how you've seen things evolve in this you know, new cloud native container centric world? Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, so it, I, I think that there's, that the role of a CISO is getting very complicated. <laughs> uh, and I think that there's, everyone's trying to tackle what does it mean uh, to have uh, a robust security strategy? And traditionally, everyone really focused on this crunchy outer shell, if you will, of uh, firewalls and all this network-based security. But the reality is now everything lives outside uh, of, uh, of that world or significant portions of your system. Uh, and you're serving and, de and delivering containers and code to customers uh, and they're now becoming smarter uh, with wanting to understand what type of risk might be introduced to their organization um, by consuming uh, those deliverables. Uh, and so there's this whole concept. There's now a whole industry around understanding risk. Uh, I actually was talking to someone recently. I went to Black Hat uh, with Slim this last year, and I've gone every year for probably the last decade, except for obviously COVID. And every year, the conference, uh, for those that may not be familiar with Black Hat, Black Hat's a, a large cybersecurity conference in, in Las Vegas. And the every year, the floor is covered with your traditional security vendors, uh, the Palo Altos of the world and Fortinets and you know, Zscaler now, so on and so forth. What I found particularly interesting is the biggest booths were now uh, vulnerability scanners. Uh, there's, there's Sneak had one of the biggest, uh, Aqua had a huge booth, even the Palo Alto booth. There was more there, uh, talking about some of their scanning co code security capabilities versus their fire rather than their firewalls. So this is becoming very, uh, front and center. Uh, and most CISOs now, uh, in cybersecurity teams are actively working with their developers and actively working with their their IT departments to understand uh, how to get ahead of the risk around the containers that they're creating and and uh, shipping and consuming. Uh, let's also talk about what does it mean for cultural, you know, or social or organizational structures, because as you, you know, you talked about CISOs, we talk about DevSecOps, we talk about shift left, we talk about, you know, zero trust approach. But what is happening is that uh, I, the reality is a bit different. It's like we, are, we have broken the old hard silos of security networking, but there are still soft silos because there will be folks like you who specialize or interested in security. But when we do talk about things like DevSecOps or shift left, we are talking about enabling developers to also own security. It's not you know, because also <laughs> developers don't like to talk to security people, you know, because that means slowing things down, <laughs> things down. So, so talk a bit about what does this mean, this shift as you talk about evolution mean for developer experience and also what does this mean for overall security also? You, you beat me to the next punch, which was uh, while I was at, at Black Hat, and this was early on as I was just coming on board at Slim, 
just about every CISO was actively trying to hire or had just recently hired a new head of product security or a head of DevSecOps or, or, or were at least now tied in with their dev, head of DevOps or engineering. Uh, so these, uh, this is becoming a very cross-functional uh, uh, challenge uh, and strategy to solve that challenge. And so uh, one of the things that we did uh, once, I, once uh, I came on board was we redesigned our actual design partnership program. Uh, and the way I think about myself uh, in Slim is I'm the voice of the customer um, and trying to understand what our customer base is saying. And uh, as, you, as I'm sure you're aware, we're huge advocates of developers um, and uh, we spend a lot of time with them. And as we started to being able to bring a little bit more of the security type of um, uh, relevance and conversation, uh, what we saw was something I've never seen before in my career, uh, which is uh, DevOps and security people coming to the same table, getting excited about working on a project together and trying to solve and tackle this challenge. Um, there's been a lot of promises of that in the past. This is the first time in my career I'm actually see it happen uh, because every this is a challenge that's impacting uh, everyone, and we need to to tackle it. It can only be achieved and solved uh, cross functionally. Earlier, you were talking about when we go to these events, even uh, the traditional vendor, not actually traditional vendors, but uh, a lot of focus is on you know scanning vulnerability, risk, things like that. And if you look at Cloud Native or you know containers in general. Uh, I still remember you know a few years back when you go to a booth and talk to somebody. Yeah, we have uh, containerized everything, but if you ask what is in their container, they have no idea. In, because container, you, you are linking to a lot of repositories, and there were also a lot of you know uh, cases where the hardening was changed and it was going to a totally different repository. You don't even know. It's not just. Uh, uh, security risk if you don't know what is in your container. It could also be compliance. You know, your code may not be compatible with the license uh, that is being used there. So there can be a lot of things there. So when we look at, uh, you know, container images, uh, you know, golden images uh, and things like that, talk a bit about uh, the, the, I mean, containers, you know, from the Docker days, we've been talking about container security and we are still yeah. talking about that. So talk a bit about uh, container security, uh, what is the right approach and if the current approach is uh, actually offering any security at all or not. The last few years, the security industry has done a really good job at telling everyone how bad they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but haven't really offered a meaningful way to solve the challenge. Uh, and it's put developers um, in an impossible situation. Uh, a, it's a never ending, unwinnable battle. And candidly, uh, in these conversations, the, as you kind of talk through the, what they're trying to, what they're having to do to overcome uh, it's a massive tax on new innovation and new features that they're trying to deliver. Uh, and so, you know, the I think NIST issued some guidance around this um, a few years ago where they, it was, we got to do something. <laughs> and so let's do scanning. And then this whole concept of maybe having like a golden image uh, was, was what was communicated and where a lot of uh, companies try to, what I've been seeing a lot of companies try to start with some sort of minimized image if they can. Uh, and then they kind of do their best practices and scanning and then get it out the door. Uh, the, the larger, more sophisticated uh, companies have entire teams that do nothing but specialize in creating these golden images and then ensuring that there's no new vulnerabilities added as it goes through the developer pipeline. But there's a problem with this fundamentally. Uh, the state of vulnerabilities is not a static state. It changes every second. Uh, and also, the as you're developing and iterating, sometimes when you're making updates to say solve, uh, you're playing whack-a-mole. You try to solve a vulnerability, so you pull down a new version of a library or something along those, com those lines. And you've now increased the size of the container, but there's a, there's less now vulnerabilities, so we're going to ship it. 
what ends up happening is that attackable surface of that container is just ever growing. Um, very rarely do we see containers reduce in size. Uh, they continue to just expand. And there is a, what we're seeing is that there's an, a, uh, uh, an, a, basically a, a cumulative effect here uh, where as the, the mature and the longer the container is out there, even if you're doing your best practice of starting with a uh, per NIST, right? Uh, that where you're starting with a pre-hardened or base image like Alpine, by the time you're shipping it out the door, the attackable surface uh, could be 50 times larger than what you started with in the base OS. And while it may be uh, relatively clean today, there is a high likelihood tomorrow that's not going to be the case. And it's, again, a never ending battle. And the only way to solve this, uh, in our opinion, uh, is to flip the whole thing on its head uh, and focus on uh, vulnerability reduction and reducing the size of containers at the final point, rather than focusing all the way as far as you can go to the left. But if you just look at, you know, that ideal solution is to, you know, make container smaller, as you said. Uh, it, I mean, we would love to live in a perfect ideal world, but that is not the reality. So talk a bit about what is happening right now in the industry. We talk about continuous integration, continuous delivery, the whole CICD pipeline is there. Uh, as you also earlier said, you know, developers don't want to be slowed down. They do want to continue to move fast. And it's not just the new technologies keep coming in. So what is the right approach uh, that organization should approach so that, uh, once again, the security is not compromised without slowing them down with how this whole, you know, uh, the CICD pipeline uh, maintained? Yeah, so we believe uh, at, at Slim that uh, this should be as transparent as possible uh, to the developers and they should be, have the freedom to iterate uh, and to develop as they'd like um, using the containers and the libraries that they'd like so they can really maximize their creativity and, uh, and bring the best possible feature functionality as fast as possible um, to their users. The we think that taking an approach of starting, there is value in starting with a minimized image for sure, but we think that those can sometimes uh, put artificial limitations uh, that don't need to be there uh, when you can take more of an approach of hardening at the very last step. And that's something that we do that's unique uh, of being able to make determinations around whether or not containers have extra components that don't need to be there, understanding contextually the type of risks that's associated uh, with the components that are that are there, uh, and then remove all the components that don't need to be there and ship out a hardened container while giving you kind of a before and after diff uh, and also an SBOM, which is also gonna become an, in is now an industry standard and it's going further become a, a, a broader adoption here in the next uh, uh, year or so. Um, and yeah, making this whole process and integrating it directly into your CI CD uh, is critical to the success uh, of uh, as the industry and as organizations continue to get further and further mature and the expectation bar continues to, uh, uh, to, to, to get higher and higher and people are gonna have to jump up over it. What roles can governments play to kind of help organizations uh, improve their uh, security posture? Because this is going to be an even more uh, critical issue as we are looking at some potential wars that is going on in Europe. The U.S. federal government is actually pretty active in this space, and they, uh, they've, they've released a couple of different things. So they've released an executive order that effectively requires SBOMs to be delivered as part of any container uh, that uh, the government purchases and consumes. So contra contractually, uh, here within the next year or so, anyone that's trying to do business with the federal government is going to have to be able to produce uh, an SBOM. Uh, and uh, what they also do is the federal government uh, also has a, a program for cloud-specific uh, called FedRAMP. Uh, and one of the things uh, that can that's great about that program specifically is the concept of continuous monitoring, uh, this CONMON process. 
What I expect will eventually be happening here is the government's probably going to require from a contractual perspective and being the <laughs> being the number one procurer, uh, the largest procurer of IT in the world, uh, I suspect they will have a pretty big impact on the on the broader industry when it comes to understanding risk associated with the containers that are being delivered to them. Uh, will impact also the broader consumer base. The other thing I would mention is that there is a, uh, a, the, a the White House recently released a cybersecurity strategy for 2023. In that cybersecurity strategy, they outlined several pillars, uh, effectively saying we need industry to step it up. <laughs> uh, and as part of that, there's going to be various resources made available uh, to the public, um, specifically uh, organizations that are delivering solutions to critical infrastructure is going to be under significant scrutiny. And uh, DHS CISA plans to be very active in this space. And I expect we'll see a lot more guidance uh, and programs uh, launched in the next year or so. Uh, made resources made available to the to the commercial sector. And you talked about continuous monitoring or common. Can you just go a bit deeper? What does it mean so that folks, you know, who are not aware of that, they do know. And also, we can also go to the to the point earlier. You're talking about the importance that what role it can play in helping organizations once again scan all their container images and other code base. So the concept of Conmon is. You don't want to. You don't want your customers to find out potential vulnerabilities before you do. So uh, we now work with some of our customers and continuously scan and monitor their vulnerability, their, their, their containers that they're shipping to production uh, and to their customers uh, every day. And through that state, they're now able to understand when a new vulnerability arises before a customer calls them and says, hey, I scanned your container, I found these issues, or they have an auditor come in and say, I found these issues. And now they're having to, to scramble and, and it comes across as though they're unaware or, or not a mature organization. Because of that, uh, uh, there's now this, this, there's a framework that's available and I suspect specifically around containers, we're going to also see a more mature framework come out that specifically says, you know, X, you have to scan your containers uh, every so so often and the type of report you're going to need to provide, I don't know if it'll be a new SBOM or just new vulnerability scan results or just alerting them every time there's a new vulnerability and what your action plan is to solve that uh, vulnerability. Uh, that is uh, what is delivered for other types of services like cloud services and FedRAMP. Uh, I suspect we'll see something very similar uh, with the with uh, container delivery. Looking at your own career graph and looking at what Slim.ai does, uh, if I ask you, of course, this is not a simple question and there is no simple answer. Uh, an organization that, you know, they do actually know much more than uh, what we, but <laughs> still we see things like bookings.com hack. What would be your advice, uh, at least from the culture point of view, so that there should be some practices in place where companies can, you know, at least have, hey, you know, we have these things in place to improve their security posture. Yeah, have a plan uh, and uh, train your users on, you know, basic cybersecurity hygiene. There's all types of resources that are available out there. Uh, I believe there's even some free from the government. Uh, it's not a big investment from time uh, and money. The other component is uh, scan your containers, understand your risk. If you don't understand where you stand today, then ignorance is not your friend when it comes to uh, mitigating and getting ahead of threats. You want to know where you are so you can get to somewhere better. And then there's solutions and services available and strategies that are available for users out there. Obviously, Slim.ai uh, would love to work with anyone and everyone. Uh, our service today is, is still in the design partner uh, stage, so users are able to use it in its beta state um, and provide feedback. Uh, and we can deliver that meaningful impact. Uh,
for your production uh, in this current state. But yeah, basic training, uh, understanding where you sit uh, by, through various scannings, and then having an action plan to actually mitigate and do something with those results. Those are all key. Ian, thank you so much for taking time out today and share these insights. Uh, I would love to chat with you again because there is so much to talk about. As you also said, security is not kind of a product, it's a process, you know, you have, so, so there are so many things to talk about and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, I look forward to it.